Hi, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net and in this short video I'm going to show you how to save time and make your ear training 400% more effective. Let's get going. Now, about ear training, you have to ask yourself why exactly you're doing ear training. There are several reasons, but I'm guessing that the number one motif for doing ear training is to be better prepared when you play with other people. And in my mind, I go, well, if you want to be prepared to play with other people, might as well play with people right now and might as well play with the best people in the world right away. So you probably see what I'm doing uh, right there. Where I'm going with this idea is the bar none, the real ear training, the real deal is to transcribe solos from recordings or get uh, get something off of recordings, right? So whether you'd be transcribing copying chords or just a melody or even a part of a solo, this is the best ear training ever, bar none. That's the, the ultimate thing. So in this video, we'll look at five steps to get you on your way to transcribing and make it, making it really efficient and not just you know, going from a solo to a solo and not retaining anything. And let's get going with the steps. The first step to transcription as a means to ear training is really simple. In fact, it's you have to choose an instrument. So say guitar, or it could be trumpet. I really like transcribing trumpet players in general, Miles Davis or other people. Uh, and then you select an instrument, you select a player. So who's a soloist you really admire, you want to transcribe. Then you select the album and the song. I know it's a no brainer. It sounds ridiculous, but you really have to do it so that you select something that you like, that you love listening to. Uh, when in doubt, you know, Wes, Joe Pass, Jim Hall, these guys, you know, you can never go wrong. But still, if you're not really into Wes, you don't have to transcribe a Wes solo. Really pick, pick something out that's really, that resonates with you. And the second step, I think we'll do the most important of all the steps now that will prevent you from losing time and just spending hours or um, basically not going anywhere with your transcript, transcription. The second step is to select the segment I want you to go ahead after you got your player, your song, your album, the solo, you know where you're going. You select a part that feels like a bite to you, you know, like a like chewing on a bite, not a full meal. I just want you to think of a bite that's about two to four weeks of work. So you practice five days a week and you can do this in two to four weeks. Um, so you have to be careful in selecting, not necessarily say, I want to get the solo done. Because maybe if it's a Wes Montgomery solo and he's soloing for 10 minutes, you will never learn the whole thing. So it's better to set yourself a straight goal right away before even transcribing the first note. You have to, to be really clear. So you don't have to chew. That's why I say a bite, right? You don't have to chew for months on the same solo. Take something that is feasible, that is at your level and that you can finish, you know, in less than a month, basically. The third step is as important as the second step and it's kind of it's kind of the same thing. In the third step, you set a deadline. So mark your calendar, take it out and write on it. I'll be done the West Montgomery solo by that date. I know it sounds once again ridiculous, but we make way more progress when we have clear goals. Plus, if you, it's a milestone for you, you say, I want to get these. Um, so get two courses down and then you get to your deadline and you get a course and a half down. So you're like, well, you know, you're 75% along the way of where you expected it to be. While if you don't set for, if you don't get a segment and if you don't select a, a, a solid deadline, then you may just ramble and kind of just abandon it out of frustration or maybe lack of interest. You become bored. Well, once you have a, a finish line, well, sometimes like, oh, I'm so close to the finish line. I really want to get it over with. So that's, uh, that's the third step. Really crucial. Set a deadline to it right now. So step four, I think I'll be talking a little more to perhaps the older generation. One of the great things that you can do now that we should all do, I think, is use a transcription software. So take your song and paste it into a nice software. People use Audacity or people use Logic or any other software. I personally prefer to use these softwares that are dedicated to transcribing. There's one called Transcribe. Uh, right now I'm on a phase where I use the amazing Slowdowner ASD. It's been around forever. And there's also Song Surgeon, Video Surgeon, and there's others. There's several really, really great software. And the, the good part is whenever I, I turn on my computer here, I have this thing that is, oh, you're transcribing this and it doesn't go away. It's like I have 
one solo and I have this, I have that. And I even have my, uh, my loops, you know, my looping point A to B. So I know, oh, look, that's my Pat Metini transcription, right? I got to get to the two minute mark, but now I transcribe up to one minute, 15 seconds, something like that. So it's a really important step to make it obvious. So every time you're in practice mode, you're in transcription mode, it's all ready for you that you don't, it's not an extra effort to start pulling out the CD out of your collection, putting in the C layer or whatever. No, no, no. It has to be all automated and as effortless as possible to sit down and start learning the thing. All right, so the fifth and last step to learning, uh, using your, your transcription as an ear training method, it really is to use the scotch tape method. And I have to spend a little more time with this scotch tape method because I talked about it uh, on the blog at some point. And I talked about it with my private students, but it seems that it's a fairly uh, misunderstood way of practicing things and it makes a difference between uh, the good players and the great players. So here's the thing. One of the mistakes I get, and that's why I call this the scotch shape method, is I get people trying to to unroll the whole roll of scotch shape and just play the solo front to back the first time or take a, a sheet of music and just try to play the entire thing. But if you read through the thing Every time you make the same mistakes in the same spots, what you should be doing is take small bites and scotch tape them together until you have a really, really long piece. So here's the process in a few words. Start your solo. Learn the first little chunk, like you can't go slower than that. It can be three notes. right? Then let this go, put it somewhere, stack it in your memory and let it go. Go to the second piece, we'll call, let's call this the B piece. Then you have three, four notes. Learn these and rehearse them until they're really great. The, at first we had ba da da, then now you have ba da ba da, all right? You have ba ba da ba. Rehearse this until it's crystal clear in your mind that you, there is no doubt you really know how to play that. Then bring back part A and scotch tape it to part B. Now you have a scotch tape part that's A and B, right? Ba ba da, ba da ba da. Practice this A B until it's really, really clear. Then take this whole piece you already have of AB, put it to the side, put it in your memory somewhere, don't touch it. Don't start at the beginning of your solo again, go to part C, look at the next part. Rehearse part C until it's really clear in your mind and scotch tape it to part A and B. So now you have a piece of, of stickers like that big, it's A, B and C. Practice A, B and C. Once you're done, put it to the side, start with part D only. You see what I'm doing? The difference is by doing so, you will save so much time because the usual reflex when transcribing, people will start at the beginning. And if they make a mistake, like, oh, I gotta stop, start at the beginning again. And beginning, the problem is that you'll practice way more the beginning of the solo or the parts that you already know rather than spending, times on the, uh, spending time on the parts that you don't know yet. So you should really invest your clear focus energy on the parts that you don't know, which makes, it just makes sense, right? I know I, I'm making sense when I'm talking, but it's another thing to do it in practice. When you sit down to take your West solo, your Miles Davis solo, your Kenny Burrell solo, you have to do this diligently and stop yourself when you see yourself going back at the beginning, like, no, 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 not that. Start where you're at with the difficult part, that little piece that you didn't master yet, all right? So that's it for the five steps. All right, so before I let you go, I have some more generic advice about transcribing that I talk about all the time to my private students, but now I think it's worthwhile just mentioning them in passing. The first thing I think is don't write it down. It's one of the great tips. Don't write it down. Why? Because if you think transcription is about writing, thing downs, uh, writing things down, I think you're missing a part of the point. Transcribing is like walking into somebody else's shoes, right? So you don't need to write everything down, although you can. So here's my perspective. I have some students that want to transcribe, they really want to write it down, but they're really bad sight readers or bad readers. So I'm like, when will you take this piece of paper again and read it? You're not a good reader, <laughs> you know? It's not a good way to learn to read either, to get the Pat Metini line all written out in 16th notes. So don't write it down unless you want to. And I have other students who are brilliant at writing, but really bad at playing it back after. So they're not as good players as they are transcribers. And I have other students who are somewhere in the middle where they can kind of play well and kind of write well. So if it's your case, by all means, write it down. But uh, if it's not, do, <laughs> do just like me. I get lines, I get albums. I just shed them, I learn them, and when I'm done, maybe I'll revisit the same solo in six months, but I don't write anything down because I know that one more piece of paper in my shelf on my shelf here will just collect dust over time and it's not 
what transcription is about. Uh, the other advice is learn from the same player often. So if you do one West Montgomery solo, I would recommend that you do two or three still because you get some of the same lines coming back, some of the same ideas, same fingerings and stuff. And the other advice regarding fingerings for guitarists that ties into this is you should make definite fingering choices. So you see a line, you're not sure if West plays this here or here or here. Once you select, that's it. Set in stone, it's always the same. Don't change it or change it consciously after. Don't play the solo in different fingerings all the time. Play the same fingerings over and over and over again or else you're not really learning anything. And last one, uh, which is one for the ages, that every guitar instructor in the world, everybody all together, slow down. Play, don't play that fast. Slow everything down. If you can't play it, it's too fast. If you still can't play it, it's still too fast. If you can't kind of play it and you're missing a few notes, it's too fast. If you can play it and it sounds good, it's too fast. If you can play it and it sounds great and every note is clear and everything is in perfect timing and you're all relaxed, then it's slow enough. All right, so I'll let you go. My name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher and I'll see you soon on my website. Take care.